You know when you have done something in the past that you think about it and you know you could have done better and a lot of times you start thinking about when will be that next time you'll be able to have that chance to be able to redeem yourself and try it one more time. And you wanna be able to use everything that you learned from that first time and apply it to the second or the third or however times you know, it takes you or you wanna try it to be able to make either a better product or to be able to have a better outcome. That's where I'm at today. And let me show you this shot that I took about two years ago. This was in fact my very first time attempting to capture the Milky Way. This happened again, like I said, about two years ago when we went to visit the Grand Canyon. And I think we were in a town called Williams, uh, somewhere in Arizona, just south of the Grand Canyon area. And you know, you can see it, it's not the greatest shot, but let me remind you, I don't have top of the line kind of gear. I have an entry level camera. I use a Nikon D5500, I mean, as entry level as it gets. But I'll tell you what, I'm a firm believer that you should use everything that you have at the moment and just push it to the limit. That's that's me. Uh, no end to I feel like I have mastered this entry level camera. I probably won't get anything for a little bit, you know? And for what I use it for, I like it. I have fun with it. Um, I know more expensive gear can make things easier and even better just with the, you know, a couple settings, the snap of a button or whatever the case may be. But I just like to go through the struggle. I mean, it's the experience. It's uh, you know, like a lot of people said, it's actually the journey what you actually enjoy. So now let me tell you a story of how this picture came about, what actually happened. Wait, I'm gonna need some help. Okay, so story time. We actually were in Vegas. We left uh, <laughs> Vegas and drove towards Williams. Fuck you, bird! Before we got there, we actually stopped at the Hoover Dam. I'm gonna actually link the videos below if you guys wanna watch the videos from the Grand Canyon. And by the time we got there, it started getting a little dark. We went to the hotel, uh, dropped off all our stuff and then we started looking at a place to eat and the only thing around the area was a subway not sponsored and we went to subway ordered our sandwiches when we were actually leaving subway we get inside the car i noticed that it was peach black it was absolutely dark and right away i thought that i always been wanting to be in an area where it's extremely dark so i'm able to take or try to take a photo of the uh, milky way and one of the things when you're going to take a picture of the milky way that is very important is number one that it's really dark in the area and number two that you don't have any moonlight whatsoever i pulled up the app looked it up there was no moon so i thought to myself today is the opportunity i have another app specifically that shows you the start and everything else so I looked to see at what time, if, uh, the Milky Way was actually going to be out above the horizon. When I looked it up, it was said that it was going to start showing about 3 a.m. Uh, remind you, we were exhausted from the trip. We just left Vegas, drove. We were extremely tired. So we got to the hotel. I told my wife, hey, this is what I want to do. Are you talking about me? What? What are you up to in there? Nothing. So I told her, this is what I want to do. I want to be able to, you know, have the chance for the first time to try to capture the Milky Way. And, you know, what did she say? Yeah, sure, let's go. Well, when we got there, we found a good spot by a lake, but it was freezing. It was like 30 degrees or 30 something degrees. And it was absolutely so windy. It was so windy that day. Uh, my wife just stayed inside the vehicle, you know, warming up with the heater on while I was outside with gloves and all kinds of gear trying to, you know, 
handle the camera and try to put the settings to try to be able to capture the Milky Way. And that took about over an hour. You know, for me, again, it was my first time, so I was trying to get the composition correct. I was trying to get, you know, the light, the lens, everything. So that was the first time. You may be asking yourself, why are you telling me all this? Well, let me show you something. Okay, so I just saw this, and this is actually taking place today. And as you can see, it says July 25th, film your day and share your story. You know what? Let me play this video, and you'll see what I'm talking about. What do you love? What do you fear? What would you like to change in the world? My name's Kevin McDonald, and I'm a film director, and I'd like to make a film with you. <laughs> On July the 25th, take your camera, film your day, and tell your story. It's called Life in a Day 2020, and it's a crowdsourced documentary, a portrait of the world on a single day. Everybody and anybody is relevant to this film no matter what your experience is. This is actually a sequel to a film we made 10 years ago. July 24th, 2010. The first one was a statement of where we were then, and this will be a statement of where we are now. You don't need me to tell you that this has been an extraordinary year. There are so many huge, important things going on in the world, and that might be reflected in what you film. But what's going to be of interest to you might be something more intimate, something more personal. Today we're going to video Sasha's first ever shave. What's important to you in your life, your specific life? What we don't want is the glossy, perfect social media version of you. We want authenticity, we want reality. My advice is just do it. essential in Florida. We are all packed up um, and we are heading actually to do a quick drive through. One of my cousins actually, it's his birthday and you know 2020 this whole pandemic that kicked out so we can't really hang out together with a family which is you know kind of sad. But we're gonna do a quick drive through, say happy birthday, and uh, give him his little gift. And after that, then we're gonna head out. I was looking, so I have this app, it's called Light Pollution. And this is the app that I'm using to identify or to find an area where it's actually as dark as possible. I'm in Florida, Orlando area, and as you already know, it's, it's a big city and that's light everywhere. So there's a lot of light pollution. So the only place that I was able to find that actually it's a little darker is south. But it's about two hours and a half or so, give or take. But I'm gonna show you real quick, see if you guys can see it. Um, let's see. So all of that, as you can see, is super bright. And we're trying to go all the way down here towards that blue area. That blue area, what it means is it's actually uh, the darkest area. There's not a lot of light pollution. And like I said, it's near Lake Okeechobee. It's one of the, actually the biggest lake in Florida. I also have this other app, the Sky View, which lets me see exactly where would the Milky Way uh, come out. Now, we got one, well, a couple issues or at least it could become a big issue number one you're supposed to do it in a time where there's no moon at all period it's supposed to be super dark and we do have a moon uh it's about almost close to half moon so it's quite bright i kind of in my head i'm thinking it might be a waste of time to drive all the way down there to give that a shot but i'm still gonna do it and the other part is again it's florida it's during summertime it rains like crazy and there could well be a lot of clouds up in the sky that might block the entire view completely. Uh, but I'm taking the chance. Well, we're taking the chance and we're gonna take the drive and hopefully we get there and it's gonna be nice and clear and hopefully that moonlight, 
I know it's gonna affect the picture, but hopefully not as much. You got a balloon? Happy birthday, brother! Thanks. <laughs> I know this sucks. Do you guys want something to drink? Well, we have the cupcakes. Oh damn! Hold on. <laughs> Coming soon. Got the cupcakes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. Have a cupcake, you feel better. I know, I was like, wait, where's the cupcakes? <laughs> <laughs> we got cupcakes. Well, that was cool, but sad. just sad at the same time. I miss my family and be able to hang out with them. Like, just even just have a drink with them and I just, just want to hug Tia. Yeah, it was sad. I don't think I've ever seen her and I hugged her. But uh, we haven't seen her in, in a while. It's been a couple months. Yeah. But, well, we, got yeah. <laughs> we got some cupcakes, so. That's gonna make everything better. Happy birthday to Emmanuel. Happy birthday! <laughs> Everything looks nice and clear that way, but we are going Continue on Florida this way, of West course. For 17 miles. We still got one more hour to go, but I'm really concerned about those clouds. It's like super cloudy anywhere you look. Really cloudy. It's 9.20 and we just got to the area and yes, it's absolutely dark and there's bugs everywhere. But there's still a lot of clouds and um, the Milky Way, it's already up in the sky. Well, it's been up in the sky, but <laughs> above the horizon. <laughs> so we're going to wait. We're going to wait it out for a little bit and see if we get a chance. What do you need? Eating you alive already? Yeah. Hold on, I got it. Here. This is what you gotta do in Florida, especially if you go out late at night. Ah. So I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up the tripod and hopefully we can get it. No? Can you see me or no? Where is it? <laughs> 
freaking bugs everywhere. Ah. What's wrong, babe? Oh, I can't see you because your red lights. Take your red lights off. That I'm trying to point the camera up for the Milky Way. Which is somewhere I'm around there. I'm my cell box. But. Very creative, very creative. A set of power lines that are right in the middle, and I can remove them in Photoshop, but I don't want to go through that. You don't want to go through the hassle? Nope. Yes, that's what I was saying. I don't think there's any power lines over there. Let's go test it out before it gets too late. Alright. It's so freaking hot outside. Compared to, remember that time we went to uh, the Grand Canyon, our first attempt? It was freezing. The first. Oh the yeah, first time, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so cold. How hot is it right now? Like 100. It's like 80. All right, so we moved across the street. Oh, your red lights. Turn your yeah. lights off, cause it. I move. We move across the street, so there's no power lines here. And the Milky Way is supposed to be right there, going up down that way. We do have the moon that we're competing against, but it is covered somewhat with some clouds, which doesn't really make a difference. It's still bright, but we're gonna try and see. So let me show you guys. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. So this is the app. So there's the Milky Way right there. That's what we're trying to capture today. We found this train tracks. And we're just taking some shots over here. So hopefully we got some good shots. If not, then we get to try all over again. So did we get it? Sort of. So remember I told you the moon was going to be in. Well, let me let me just show you. So that right there is supposed to be the Milky Way, as you can see. But because of the moon, the moon illuminated all the clouds that they were around the area, which the clouds were an issue to begin with. But obviously having the moon, it made it even worse. But you can still kind of sort of see it a little bit. But you know, again, it's not my best shot. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna get there eventually, but that only means that we get to try it again. <laughs> 